Welcome back everyone to our gameplay series of X4 Foundations. So in today's video, I want to start out by talking a little bit about the economy. Uh, if you're new to the X series, the economy is really the lifeblood of the game because so much of the game's mechanics and opportunities surround trading and mining and producing goods and being able to sell those goods, which in turn will earn you the credits that you need to build bigger fleets, to not only mine more and trade more, but also to defend yourself or go out and attack and, and whatever else you want to do. So without a good economy, the game really falls flat after just a short period of time of gameplay. So at the beginning of a save, whenever you start a fresh new world, you're going to have a certain amount of demand out there and supply. So you can send your traders out and you can try to match up those buy and sell orders and make money that way. And of course, you're also going to be able to send miners out to fulfill all those buy orders from refineries and so on. So all of that is great at the beginning of the game, but the economy and its health is what's going to determine long term how much playability you're going to get out of a save. And the reason I bring this up right now is because we're getting to that point in the game. And as I spin around, uh, one of the chief ways that you can find out how the economy is doing is simply visit the wharfs and the shipyards. Uh, and that's really what I've been doing uh, quite a bit of. And we'll talk about some other things that I've been doing uh, here in just a moment. But I have started to notice a few more ships being built in here. Of course, the smaller ships you'll, you'll notice up here on the sides. Uh, and I've started to see a few of them here and there being built. And then uh, not too long ago, I was actually in here and there were two large miners being built. So some movement is going with the economy. And of course, every ship that's built needs resources to build. So that's where your stations and your refineries and all that can really get the gears turning and, and try to churn out some, um, in our case, some opportunities to make some money. So that's what's going on right now in the game. The developers are patch after patch. They're trying to fine tune the economy to get things going. I was over at the shipyard and I've seen some larger ships being built. So there are signs that the economy is starting to go. But at this point, we need it to go a little bit faster because, again, we're starting to see some of that demand dry up, which leads me into the next part, which is to pull up our fleet. So as I come to the map, you notice that we have $11.6 million. We would have quite a bit more than that, but I've been testing around with some different things. Namely, I purchased a large miner and a large trader just to see where the demand was in some of these areas and was there enough demand for some larger vessels for our particular point in the gameplay. Now, at some point in the future, I'm expecting All Out War to break out and then demand should be through the roof. But then again, also, you're going to have a whole lot more uh, threats to deal with as attacks will be a lot more common. And that's where the action really starts to pick up. But for right now, we're sort of in a lull. There's not a whole lot of attacking going on. And it seems like a lot of things are drying up. So let's start out. And I'm going to show you what I do periodically. I make a habit of, of just really just every few minutes just forcing myself to come in and take a look at a few metrics. And the first thing I do is I pull up uh, the trade screen. And right now we'll go ahead and turn this back on. And then I look at the solid and or the liquid, uh, depending on what it is I'm actually uh, searching for at the time. And then I usually start out with a very broad view. I, I zoom out as far as I can to show all the stations. You can see we've uncovered 158 stations so far. And I just take a look at the demand. Okay, so what are the stations buying? And, and I already noticed here, uh, silicon, 1,500. So that's a pretty low amount based on how much one of our medium-sized miners can actually uh, mine and then sell in one trip. So that's getting pretty low. So I've started to move a miner here or there off of silicon. And then we'll watch that demand over time. Um, if that grows back up to 2,000 or 2,500, then I'll know I can put another miner back on silicon and we'll continue making money because silicon makes some pretty good money. 
And then I come up here and I see the three dots tell me that I'm in pretty good shape as far as demand on these. 26,000 here, 31, almost 32,000 for methane, and then ore is at 44,000. So I know ore is in good shape right now. I've got, as you can see, several ore miners here. A total of five right now. And I continue to move these guys around. And of course, I rename them as I move them. So I'm not stuck having to do any of these uh, particular activities. I simply swap them around based on what is needed at the time. Now, there has, has been a ton of discussion about Nvidium, both on the forums. Uh, I've noticed it quite a bit in the comment section of some different videos. So here's basically the deal with Nvidium as far as, as far as I've been able to tell in my playthroughs. Uh, now I don't have 100 hour playthroughs, so I can't speak to that, but to the extent that I have put several hours into these playthroughs, what happens with Nvidium is it seems to be basically just a get rich quick kind of scheme at the very beginning because there's a lot of demand for it and you can go out and mine a ton of it, make a ton of money on it, but it's not really all that sustainable. If you noticed in my getting started video that I, where I talked about mining and getting your miners up and start, I didn't really talk very much about Nvidium and that's why. Because I know the main point of, of auto trading and auto mining is that you want to set it and forget it. You basically just want them to carry out their orders and you want them to mine, you want them to sell without you having to deal with it. Well, Nvidium, you're not going to be able to do that forever. And you can see right now, all we could sell of Nvidium is 37 of them. And you notice, we don't have any Nvidium miners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a close eye on this number. If it continues to stay at 37, then I know we don't need any miners for that particular resource. If it starts to go back up, then I'll move you know, one miner back over. And if it starts to go up a, a ton, like say when war breaks out or something, then... I'll move more over because obviously Nvidia makes a great deal of money, but it's a very short term fix at the beginning of the game. But that doesn't mean it's not worth it. It's very much worth it uh, because you don't have to have a dedicated Nvidia miner. You can always swap them over to mine other things as time goes on. So again, I come in and I look at the different amounts here. And then, of course, you can also zoom in on different sectors and areas, and you can see the demand in those particular areas. So that's sort of how I approach this. And long term, it's what I will be doing as part of my fleet management. So then I do the same thing with the liquid. You can see there's not a whole lot of demand for helium or hydrogen, and we don't have any of those miners right now, but we do have uh, a couple of methane miners and you can see we're doing just fine on the demand for that so that's sort of my routine and i do this every probably 15 to 20 minutes in the game just to keep a close eye on what's going i also do something similar for the container goods uh, in that i just try to get a brief overview of what's selling and how much is selling uh, some of the things that have the higher demands, maybe there's some opportunity there for us in uh, the future when we start to build up stations, because that's one of the things I want to do today. But here is a brief uh, look at sort of what we have going on right now. I picked up another trader, a large trader, and then I've been moving around miners to different resources based on the demand. All right, so let's go ahead and now let's zoom in back on the map. And let's take a look at where we might want to put our station. Now, this is going to be our first station, and it's going to be very basic. Now, the reason I say it's going to be our first station, because I'm going to remind you, we have not done anything with the main story plot. Uh, and I won't spoil it right now. Uh, I'll wait until we actually get to that part in the gameplay. But for right now, I've been avoiding because there are some other things I wanted to do and use this more as a, an example or a tutorial type series here at the beginning. I've had a lot of requests to uh, to show the station building and maintaining mechanics, so we're going to start to get into that a little bit more here. And so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to come in under Manage Plots. Okay, so of course right now we don't have any plots, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show an example. We're just going to go four kilometers on each of these, 
and I'm going to show you sort of the cost involved. Now, once we create plot, that's going to give us our box on the screen. And what you can do, if you want to see about the size of existing stations, then you can simply fly around and compare the size box you have with what you see from the various stations. Okay, you can see that in some cases, like right here, our 4x4 is tremendously huge compared to some of these other stations. And in other cases, like if we come over to the shipyard, you can see the shipyard is still smaller than what we have here. So that'll give you an idea of essentially what a 4x4 uh, station would look like. The next thing we're going to need to do is figure out, okay, where do we want to put it? Because that's going to be a huge determining factor in the cost. All right, so right now I'm going to put it somewhere in Argon Prime just simply because this has been my hub and it's where I spend most of my time because it's where I've been building most of my ships, uh, if not all of them, to this particular point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out and we're going to put it sort of halfway in between uh, the wharf and I believe that's the ore refinery right there. So I'm going to start out and I'm just going to put it down right there. Now, that's not set in stone, but it does give me an idea of how much the fee would be to acquire this license. Now, we're definitely going to acquire the license because we don't want to start any trouble with the locals. We're, we're in great shape with the locals. We want to keep it that way. So $3.9 million, essentially, is what that would cost. But you notice, as I drag that away, farther and farther away from the highway, then it goes down tremendously. And at some point, it's no longer going down. So 512000 is sort of the baseline amount that we're going to have to pay for this location. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this thing in basically as close as I can and still have 512. So that's pretty good there. So you notice it's going to be a little distance away from the highway, but that's okay. This is our first station. It's going to be extremely basic. It's not going to make us very much, if any, money. But we're just getting started and we want to put down something uh, just to get us started. So it's going to be a huge lot and we can expand it or do nothing with it, whatever we want to do. But one of the fun things to do in this game is build and we have the money to do some of that right now. So I want to go ahead and get started. All right, so the fee, $512,000, let us go ahead and pay that. So the money comes out of our account. So now we have this plot and you can see it's going to give it a name. Argon Prime Factory, so a very basic name to get us started, but we have this area of space. So let's go ahead and click on Continue. And now the options are basically endless for what we can do, and they're only limited essentially by the number of credits you have and the access you have to different modules. Again, we're very basic at this particular point. I've made a few purchases for some modules, but not a whole lot. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I actually want to put a dock module out here. Now, I purchased the luxury blueprint just for this reason, because the basic one is okay. It will certainly serve the purpose, but I kind of like the look of the luxury one. So what I'm going to do is select it, and I'm going to drop it inside our, uh, our box here. Okay, and first of all, I noticed that I'm looking straight down. I'm in a top-down view so I'm going to go ahead and move this around a little bit. All right. You also notice that I am basically in the center of the box. And that's where I want to be as far as the height. So now I'm going to come back down to the top down view. And I'm going to drag this guy around. And I'm going to put him toward the very front. And there you can see right about there is a pretty good spot. That puts him right at the front. And he's right in the center. And the reason I'm doing that, not because there's a right or wrong way, you can design these stations any way you want, and certainly will do a better job than I do because I am no designer. But the reason I'm doing this is because I want this to be at the extreme end of the station. Front, back, sides, doesn't matter. I just want it to be at the extreme side so it's very easily accessible and it's not blocked in by a bunch of other modules. So we're good there to get started. Now we're going to need a connector module. So let's see, what do I want? Now, I'm going to go with a base 3 because it's a pretty good size. Uh, actually, that may be a little bit too big. Let's look at the base 2. Yeah, base 2 is pretty good. So now I'm going to put that down by left-clicking. And let's drag around. You can see that's going to give us a little bit of space before we start to go out in other directions. 
Okay, so that's going to be good. You notice in the top right hand corner of the screen, it's going to add that module to the list in the order that we have actually placed these down and we can expand this to see exactly what materials are needed and how many are needed for construction. All right, so let's go ahead and now I'm going to put a cross in here and that way we can go out in a whole bunch of directions but I wanted to get this connector piece in here in between so it gives us just a little bit of room. All right, now I want to actually, let's see, I want to do production and let's go ahead and put some energy cells out here and you can see it snaps right onto that connector on uh, the left hand side so we're going to drop that down that's going to put us some solar panels over here now let's come in under storage modules and I do have at least a small version of each of the storages that you have in the game you have container liquid and solid of course the liquid and the solid are things that you would mine container is most everything else that you're going to produce or trade in so we're going to go ahead and drop down that doesn't connect uh, by default over here we would have to play around with that a little bit but I'm going to go ahead and drop this on the back our first container storage I'm just going to drop it on the back and just sort of extend out uh, toward the back part of the station as defined by our docking module so, so far, we have a basic production module, we have a little bit of storage here, and then we have a couple of connectors in addition to our dock. So now let's look in at defense modules. Uh, we have some of those, probably not quite ready for that just yet, but we'll certainly be looking at that. Uh, connector modules, um, I do like the idea, we're going to need some uh, habitation at some point on this particular station, so we'll get to that. We'll uh, need to purchase and or scan a module for that. So if we look back under production modules, all I have unlocked right now are the basics and we could add meat in here, but we're gonna hold off on meat just for a little while and just go with the basic energy cells. So storage, we're in good shape. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and put down a couple of container modules. And again, you can see just how much we're at we're getting close to halfway as far as front to back on this particular station and that's okay with me I want to make sure we don't run out of storage early on because uh, we're going to be producing quite a few energy cells okay so docking modules we're good for now uh, defense modules we'll put down uh, what I'm probably going to do is put down something like this uh, but we're going to hold off on that because we don't have anything to put on it right now all right, so I think we're in uh, good shape. Uh, let's go ahead and get this out. We're just gonna zoom out and get rid of that module. So I think we're in good shape to get started. A very, very basic station, certainly not optimized um, and certainly not gonna make us very much, if any, money, but it gets us started in the right direction. So now we can take a look at some of our build resources. Of course, right now we don't have any resources available in our build storage. We don't have a build storage just yet. Resources completed. This will give you an idea of how much of each resources, of these resources that you're going to need to either supply or purchase, which brings us into the next uh, manage buy offers for needed resources. So you have a couple of options here. We're going to need to hire a builder, which we'll do, uh, or at least attempt to do here momentarily. Hopefully we can find one nearby. But you have a couple of choices. You can say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my existing fleet of traders and or miners, depending on what the resources are, I'm going to have them bring everything we need for construction. That's perfectly fine. You can certainly do that. Or you can come in and deal with uh, the prices here. And then also at the, at the very bottom of this section, you can see available money for construction. If you leave this at zero, your builder's not going to be able to buy anything because he's not going to have any money to use. So we're going to go ahead and, and plan on our builder buying. So let's give him, uh, let's start him out just with somewhere around a million dollars. That's good, a million twelve. That's perfectly fine. That, that's not going to be enough to get everything we need, uh, particularly with the Claytronics. They are pretty expensive. But a million dollars will get him started. So let's go ahead and uh, confirm that. And let's get some of these things out of the way. Now we need a builder uh, before anything 
can get started. So let's go ahead and go under assign or hire a builder. And now we come back out to the map screen. And as we scroll around, what we're looking for is a construction vessel. And thank goodness I see a couple in very close proximity that are just sitting here. Oh, he just jumped out. Either that or he moved out of radar range. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select this guy. And now you notice that he is hired. It costs us $50,000 to do that. Uh, so there is reason to build one of your own if you just want to have one nearby and you don't have to worry about finding one and waiting for him to get to your location, then that's fine. But early on in the game, there's simply no reason uh, to save up the money for a construction vessel. It's just not worth it. Um, especially early on in game, unless you just want the ultimate convenience later on as the game progresses. So now we have the basics. We need to go ahead and confirm our module changes. And the good news is we're not tied to this station design. We can change this as much as we want going forward. We can remove modules, move things around, rotate things, anything we need to do. But for right now, let's go ahead and confirm that. And so now... What I can do is the Argonne Prime Factory. Now I can edit it any way I want to. You can see by default, we basically went by a, with a, a four kilometer by four kilometer design scheme. And I can choose to increase that if I so desire. Okay, so that gives us options there. I can also come in to the uh, Argonne Prime Factory. And I can look at the different modules we have. I can right click on it. I can look at not only information, but I can manage the funds and plan the bill, which takes us right back to the screen we were just on. And the reason I'm coming back in here right now is you notice uh, it shows 12 minutes is what it would take to build this module. But of course, we don't have any resources just yet. In fact, our builder, I'm sure, hasn't even gotten here yet. Uh, and it'll take him a few minutes to do so. But this is a great example of of a good idea to keep track of your uh, station progress as it continues because it will give you an idea of what you're short on. Uh, of course, we know right now we don't have any resources just yet, but let's say you come in here and uh, you look at what's available in the build storage and you find that, okay, we've got all the claytronics we need to build this particular module and all of the energy cells, but we're short on whole parts. And that's where you can identify weaknesses in the chain and perhaps open up some opportunities for trade and or uh, some production on your own a little bit later on in the game. Because particularly once you realize what resources are needed to build these stations as well as uh, the ships themselves, then you have a start in what could make you some very good money, assuming that the economy continues to roll along and it and is getting improved patch by patch okay so let's go ahead and get out of here because we don't really need this right now we'll let all of this continue to happen the only thing i'm going to do from time to time is i will keep a close eye out for uh, a builder to see when our builder gets somewhere close hopefully the guy we just chose uh to hire isn't someone who was on his way somewhere else and we're going to have to wait forever for him to get there so hopefully that doesn't happen but for right now we have a builder and we have some orders outstanding for him to buy modules if i see that it's not quite going as fast as i want i'll simply grab some of our traders here and start uh, finding our resources manually and we'll take it from there so that'll get us started at this point with building our station of course we've still got plenty more to do we've got more modules that we can add uh, in the future but before we can do that we need to purchase some more modules and where you do that of course you have two options you can either scan for those or you can actually come in and purchase them from your faction representative which in our case is over here at the shipyard so you can go over there take a look at what's available and let's do that now all right, now we've made our way over to the faction representative, which is at the Argonne uh, shipyard. So if I scroll out a little bit, this is where we are here in the shipyard. And I simply took uh, the fast travel over to the faction representative. So here we are. Let's go ahead and talk to her. 
and we have the option to purchase licenses or blueprints. Let's go into the blueprints. And then we have both equipment and modules. The equipment are things like turrets that we'll need for our uh, defenses. But then if we come under the modules, we've got all sorts of options here. And you can see that some of these are extremely expensive and some of the later game uh, type of purchases that you would make if you decide to purchase all of these. Again, Claytronics, very expensive, $20.7 million. So there are all of your options. And again, this is just one particular faction. Uh, each of the factions will have blueprints that you can purchase uh, for varying items, both production as well as storage and so on. So basically everything you would need if you want to go the purchasing route is available with your faction representative. Uh, so for our purposes right now, we're not going to purchase any additional modules. We're going to save up some over time and decide exactly what we want uh, to get into as far as production. So that's going to do it for today. We got started uh, building our station. We'll come back next time when hopefully things are a little bit farther along. But for now, thank you very much for joining me. And stay tuned as we will continue our gameplay series of X4 Foundations.